Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. It was a mistake. That was our fault, and we apologize for our mistake. Uh, in your GPS, right, in GPS track, it is completely that you have penetrated to Iran territory water? Iran, Tabore! So. How was the Iranian behavior with you? You were treated well! Fantastic. While we were here, we thank you very much for your hospitality and your assistance. Uh, didn't you have a special problem? We you like no problem, falafel? So. No, there's no. You apology. like wearing there's hijab? No for when when you, when you have a problem with the boat, you apologize. The boat had a problem. No, there, <laughs> and there was no looking for any apology. Okay. There, I mean, this was just standard nautical practice. Biden is either insane or a liar or both. Welcome to the Savage Nation, and he is a he typifies the entire government that we are facing. We the people have an insane, lying government. Welcome to the show. Don't don't mean to be kind of a copy of Sid Vicious here, but tell me what's more vicious. The Vice President of the United States of America with false teeth saying there was no apology to the terrorist nation of Iran and then the apology from the captain of that fast riverine boat. Tell me who's crazier. Tell me who's crazier, you or Biden. You, the progressives who have done this to us, or Biden. I want to review this story again today because I was the only one in the media who said the entire thing stinks to high heaven. I haven't seen one person in the United States or world media, including RT, which I go to regularly, by the way. It says, isn't it strange that I don't go to Fox News much anymore? I never go to CNN maybe once a month. And I go to RT and I get better news. I even get better news on RT television than I do from Fox News. It's primitive. It's 1950s-like. The sets are bad. But they're very intelligent. The discussions are amazing. Even they didn't cover this. It looks to me like this was a setup. I still don't believe this was an accident. I think these boats were delivered to Iran by the Obama administration. And moreover, the sailors who gave themselves up so quickly without firing a shot, you want my opinion? You're going to say, well, what would you do if you were in their position? A, I am not a sailor. I am a civilian. The rules are different. They were not supposed to apologize. They were not supposed to talk about how well they were treated. In fact, they should be tried for what they did. I am not celebrating their return. I think the entire pack of them are cowards. They should be thrown in the brig and given a, be given a court-martial. Nobody has said that, by the way. What kind, of, what kind of government is this? What kind of military have we become? That we allow two boats full of people to not fire a shot and to give up and then be used for propaganda by the terrorist nation of Iran? I'm sorry. I'm right. You're wrong. The rules in the military are different than the rules amongst we civilians. I have never seen anything more cowardly in my life than I saw this display of this apology tour yesterday. And I do blame them. I blame all of them. They're not heroes. But watch. You wait and see. You wait and see what the cafe singer will do with them when they come back. These are the kind of heroes that Obama specializes in. The non-heroes. He'll give them all some medal for having given themselves up without a fight. And by the way, they made the woman wear a hijab. Did you hear that? They weren't treated badly. They forced her to undress and put on one of those throwback outfits. That wasn't mistreating prisoners of war. That's not a violation of their civil rights. There are so many elements to this story that are worthy of discussion that I'm not going to discuss them. If you want to call on it, go ahead. Since we're talking about turkeys, which is what we're talking about, these Navy turkeys, I want to talk about turkeys on airplanes because this whole issue about emotional support animals has gotten out of hand in this country. You're not going to believe this, but a Delta Airlines flight recently had to take a turkey on the airplane because one of the passengers scammed the system. You see, the passenger provided proper documentation providing that the fowl was indeed their emotional support animal. So Delta Airline, for fear of a government lawsuit, 
let the ugly bird on board the plane and even gave it its own seat. You may not know this, but turkeys aren't the only animals used as emotional support animals on flights. Some people have scammed the entire system and have taken horses, pigs, and of course dogs uh, on airplanes. This is all because of the Air Carrier Access Act, which allowed service animals to fly on planes and ensure that they can't be removed simply on the grounds that other passengers object. And so now you've got people who are simply out to upset others. The liberals like to do that. The uh, ruckus types who like to, let's say, hit police horses with bricks, burn down buildings, scream white privilege. This is an extension of that kind of mentality. They're taking turkeys and pigs and horses on airplanes now, or else they will get, will get sued. Now, i got to tell you this. You can buy statements online now saying that your animal is a care animal or whatever it's called for a few dollars. And, of course, there are problems with animals on any kind of plane. It's possible that people are afraid of certain animals or that allergic reactions by other passengers uh, could happen or about an animal biting a crew member or another passenger. Uh, there have been instances of this happening, uh, incidentally. Or the animal could have an accident on the plane, forcing an emergency landing or forcing a stewardess to get on her knees and clean up the accident. And so this has gotten out of hand. And that leads us to the turkey story, flying turkey ruffles feathers about emotional support animals on planes. I'm going to open it up to two, co uh, two questions in the uh, beginning of the show. The Navy story, the Navy story which stinks to high heaven. These boats were given to Iran as a gift so their technology could be downloaded just as the drone was given to Iran a number of years ago by a double agent inside the Obama administration's Air Force in one man's opinion, to the uh, horror stories of support animals or whatever you want to call service animal. Let's hear some service animal horror stories, restaurants. What's the worst service animal horror story you've seen in your life? Let's have some fun with that one in the Savage Nation. And now let's go to the hard news on michaelsavage.com. Top right. Illegal immigrant arrested and murder a Florida woman in Italy. Uh, she was found strangled with her head smashed open in her apartment in Florence. She, of course, was an art student. Her father was an art professor. Well, she went there and hung around in the arts expat community, doing what they all do, drug, sex, and rock and roll. And a few nights ago, she went out to a club with her friends who have nothing to do since they're art students and don't really work. And she didn't go home with them. She went to an after-hours club. And she was seen with a Senegalese an immigrant. And the next thing you know, her head was broken open and she was strangled to death. Found strangled in her apartment. There's nothing you could say about that other than isn't diversity grand. Speaking of diversity, ISIS claims res responsibility for attack in Jakarta. Speaking of diversity, we read from the Washington Times that China may enter the war against ISIS. Beijing more likely to join forces with Russia than with the U.S. That's an interesting one, Barry. You've sure done a good thing here, putting uh, Russia and China together. That's a really good piece of foreign policy, John Kerry. And for those of you who can't get enough of Muslim refugees, here's another one from the Associated Press. Federal agent says Iraqi refugee wanted to bomb Houston malls. Isn't that nice gratitude on the, pa on, the on behalf of this piece of garbage, Faraj Saeed Al-Hardan, who was welcomed into Texas in 2009 by moronic suicidal liberals? If that's not enough for you, well, there's more. There's much, much more, ladies and gentlemen, on the Savage Nation. Phone number is 855-407-282. Let's go down the list on michaelsavage.com. Oh, here's one for you. Remember a number of months ago, the head of a Bavarian district said to Angela Merkel, the potato-faced communist anti-German, that if she sends any more refugees to that district in Bavaria, they're going to put them on a bus and send them to Merkel's office. They did it. Bavarian districts send a busload of Syrian refugees to Merkel's office in the federal building. Did you know that? No. V Germany. Germany. Voluntary programs are being offered to teach migrants sex equality and free speech. You see, they come from very advanced lands in Africa and the Middle East, where women are seen as pieces of meat. And uh, the liberals invited them in. The very same feminists who hate white males seem to love third worlders who molest women. Can you figure that out? I can. 
It's called liberalism as a mental disorder. Would you like to hear a little bit more good news? The New York Police Department was forced, and this is a big story, the NYPD was forced to delete its Islamic radicalization report, caving into the demands of the criminal ACLU. I will read to you what is in that Islamic radicalization report that the New York Police Department had to take down from its website, and you will find out that everything I have been warning you about for these 20 years is 100% true. The progressive left has weakened us, has weakened our defense cells. They are like an autoimmune disease. And into this breach, there enters radical Islam and other crime. Back in a minute on The Savage Nation. All of America's behind us. President Zero has destroyed everything relevant to the United States of America. He's created a new America. Very much like Pol Pot did when he came back from having studied uh, Marxism in Paris. He created a new Cambodia. And thus far, thank God, we don't have a mountain of skulls. We have a mountain of numbskulls across America. Illegal immigrants screamed, you have treated me like a dog, before punching and strangling American artists to death in jealous, drug-fueled frenzy after sex in her Italian apartment. Senegalese Chiak de Diagne is accused of aggregated murder of Ashley Olsen in her Florence. Another, another, another uh, American blonde goes to Florence to uh, sex, drugs, and rock and roll and gets killed. Right, what's shocking about that? Artis was found dead in Florence apartment by her boyfriend on Saturday. She had two fractures to the skull and was strangled with a USB cord. The Senegalese claims he punched her when she told him to leave because her boyfriend was coming back, and he denies strangling her. I kill her, her by mistake, he told interrogators after arrest. Ah, uh, devastated family to hold funeral service in Italian city. For, okay, it's not a, you can't make a joke about it. What can you say about it? No, 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 diversity is great. It really is great. The liberals welcome diversity more so than anyone you could imagine. Even when it yields disease, death, it's still wonderful. They put their doxy ahead of their brains. I don't know if they have any brains. How did this Navy ship die out, by the way? How did it go aground? How did it get a, off course? No one's asking that question. We've gone from so to to tofu in two, two terms of a presidency. From sofu to tofu in only two terms. Of course, that would require some intelligence to know what both acronyms mean I, I mean you all know what sofu means right and you know what tofu means but we've gone from sofu to tofu in two terms you're talking about turkeys on airplanes now turkeys in the military turkeys in the government turkeys in the media giving up without a fight not firing a gun nothing pentagon says u.s sailors made a navigational error into iranian waters now how would that happen what do you mean they made a navigational error on two boats at the same time? 20 dummies didn't know where they were going? Dub, you want to talk about that? Or you want to talk about service animal uh, horror stories? Lance on WJR Radio in Detroit, Michigan. Go ahead, please, Lance. Yeah, I'm 11 years sober off uh, pot and uh, uh, alcohol. And at our meeting... A while ago, a guy would bring his chihuahua to the meeting, which would bite people, bark, disrupt the meeting, and we couldn't get it to stop. And so people. Well, had wait, but maybe eating. maybe the chihuahua needed a drink. <laughs> 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 but that's the people that. You can get what the chihuahua was a service animal that nipped at everyone. Yeah. So how'd you how'd you uh, how'd you handle it? What'd you do? Stuff him with cake or something? No, we tried to get him uh, to stop, and uh, they wouldn't allow it. The police said they can't. Uh, deny him in service animals. See, well, my point is this. There's no problem with people who are handicapped who need service dogs or people need a dog for service. You know, there's a convert. But now people, and I've seen it over and over again, are abusing it. They brought a turkey on a Delta Airlines plane, pigs, horses. These are people who like to just get over on others and upset the apple cart. They, they hate society. They're antisocial, and they're using a federal law that was written to help genuinely you let us say handicapped people, for want of a better word. I know you're not allowed to use the word, 